What is going on guys? Kevin here to bring you a new video today where today I want to talk about um, a specific TV show that I actually just finished watching. I've been kind of getting through uh, a number of different TV shows lately. Um, that show being um, The Haunting of Hill House, which was uh, for sure an interesting watch. Um, somewhat, I'd say, but not entirely. It definitely, for me, I think it had some issues with it. Um, that I was, you know, a bit um, kind of unsatisfied with that I didn't like, but it it had some good things going for it that that made it a great show that I will definitely talk about as well. Um, so, *A Haunting of Hill House* is a show about um, this family that lives as, lives in a house as kids, and um, some weird shit goes on, and not all of them witness it and um, some of them experience different things from others and are traumatized in different ways and um, they all have to flee the house um, on one night when everything goes wrong and um, some bad stuff happens to their mom which they later reveal like what actually happens to their mom and then um, yeah and basically the the whole premise of the show is more or less like what happened in that house and how each of those characters like was affected I guess in the future um, they they have like their past selves being portrayed in the story and then they have their present selves being portrayed in the story um, and their present selves all offer different takes um, on how they're affected um, and for various reasons um, but yeah um, so essentially it's a family of uh, a mother and father um, and the mother was left behind uh, which I will get into later this will be a full spoiler review show I mean uh, review so yeah um, be prepared for spoilers but um, yeah it's the story of a mother and father um, they have five sons and daughters um, and each of them are like haunted in various different ways that are chronicled um, throughout the show and each of them have their own set like personalities um, you have um, Steven who's the oldest one who seems mostly unscathed by by all this haunted stuff and writes it goes on to write a book about it um, to try to like make a profit off of you know this experience he had even though he didn't believe in any of it. He wrote it as fiction, so and he believed it was fiction. Um, and he, one thing I'll get out of the way is that I was annoyed with the fact that they went with the cliche of the having like the skeptic character who refuses to believe anything and will just stop at nothing to like disprove like a fact about like something paranormal or supernatural, like. This guy was like aggressive when it came to not believing in the paranormal and that just kind of got on my nerves because that's just like really cliche at this point like really cliche like holy crap please do something else like Jesus Christ um but yeah he was his character was interesting though in in the beginning specifically with with his situation um where like um he was trying to live on his own and in Los Angeles and he ends up getting like his camera and iPad nearly stolen by his brother Luke um, which has its own individual story um, he um, the interesting thing about this show that I will say that I do like is that um, you know it, it's not always a positive for the show but the show tells itself and tells its story in a unique well and in in a unique way um, through the different perspectives of the different characters throughout the show somewhat. Um, each episode is kind of like from the perspective of a certain character, more or less. Um, even though there's 10 episodes and there's seven characters, more or less you're, you spend a lot of time on one individual character um, on certain episodes, uh, which I do like. And so after Steven, you have Shirley um, who, you know, wanted to be able to um, fix her mom and wasn't able to and she wanted to be able to fix things like um, her dad fixed things as well a lot of the time and she couldn't 
um, fix her mom. So she went on to fix people by becoming a worker at a funeral home by embalming people or making them look good when they die, essentially. Um, yeah, so that's an interesting job role. Um, her character wasn't all that interesting to me, but I guess she was she was cool. Um, I did I did do some research to see like where all these characters were, so so I will let you know like what all these characters are from because some of them do have some some pretty solid acting history. Um, Michael Hewisman, I believe his name is, who played Steven, uh, he played a character in the movie The Invitation, um, which was an okay movie. Um, but I like this character. His acting in this is decent, but I just don't like, you know, the character they gave him. It was a little cliche. But, yeah. Um, and then you have uh, Theo, who, in my opinion, was one of the most unique characters because she was um, proposed to be, like, sensitive. Um, so she could, like, sense things in people um, and just almost, like, I guess, like, tell the future, kind of, and just, like, know what was going to happen with someone. Um, and then she could, like, feel things about that was going on with people if she touched them. So then she got, like, gloves so that she wouldn't touch people. So then, like, yeah, it became, like, this whole, like, story arc about, like, how she wouldn't touch people. And then, like, she she was also... Um, like a like a lesbian character um, who liked women and she like had like her own like story arc with like you know being in relationship with this girl named Trish um, and they had like a complex thing uh, complicated relationship going on where she still wanted to be with her kind of but she wasn't like committing to anything and that got all like complicated um, there was kind of like this annoying cliche with that too, where like um, she like met her and just immediately had sex with her, and then that's when they start like talking about their lives. Like, I feel like that shouldn't be how sex works, but that's that's just me. Like, you know, I'd like to you know maybe get to know someone a little bit before I have sex with them. It's, I mean, maybe that's what some people do. That's okay, but like, I just feel like that shouldn't be like the norm. Um, every time you see someone having sex in a movie, it just seems like that's what always happens is just, you know, a typical, you know, character meets someone cool they like in a bar or at a club. Uh, they like dancing with them. They have fun. They don't really talk a lot. They go home, they have sex, and then they finally talk about their lives. Like, okay, whatever. Like, cool. Like, I don't know. I'm like, eh. But yeah, she, her character is, is unique though, and I, I do like that. Her character was unique. Um, I loved, um, they do flashback a lot between um, the past and the present, and I loved specifically out of the, the child actors, I loved her character as a child, specifically because she, um, she was always like really intuitive, but even as a kid, she was really intuitive. So like, uh, her name is Theo. So, like, she was, like, really smart, even as a kid. So it was kind of cool to see, like, um, her being, like, smart as a kid because, like, her mom would, like, tell her things or her mom would, like, tell um, her brother or sister's things and, like, she would be like, that's not true. You're just feeling this. Or that's not true. That's just that's just how you're feeling about that. Or, or you know, she would, like, know, like, what was going on. So she had, like, a read on her which is like crazy, like, okay, and then like, yeah, it was, it was cool to see like that development, um, with that particular character, and then how she, um, grew up with that sort of ability, I guess, and then you had Luke, um, Luke, um, did I miss someone? No, I didn't, uh, Luke was, there's so many characters, but Luke was, uh, the second youngest character, technically, um, he's a twin of this other character, Nell, but he was the second youngest um, and one of the most interesting characters, in my opinion, because um, he gets raised um, and sees some really creepy shit, um, one of which was with this um, tall guy who like has like these shoes and floats and holds a cane, who is the most creepy character in the entire show for me and freaked me the fuck out and was a really great part of the story. 
and he like finds him under the bed and like traumatizes him that scene when he was like sneaking up on him in person was like so creepy um and then like he haunts him when he gets older um and he like learns this technique to like count to seven to like to like it's like a coping mechanism um to try to like ease the stress off um so he would just keep counting to seven um it somehow worked uh, i guess sometimes but Nonetheless, um, he became, so all these characters dealt with their trauma differently. Um, he became a heroin addict, so he definitely, well, I'll get into who probably had it the most worst, actually, but um, he definitely had it one of the worst um, because he was so traumatized by all of the stuff that happened to him that he turned to drugs and he became a heroin addict and he was trying to recover from that and which was a really good arc um he had he had his own like particular episode for that and what i was talking about earlier with him stealing the camera and the ipad you get to see his own perspective on why he was doing that for money he was trying to do it for money for someone he liked and someone he who he was actually going through rehab rehab with um so he actually liked this person and cared about them and wanted to help them um, because he felt like he needed someone to help him get through this. So, like, he was trying to, like, you know, get money so that he could, he could help them out, um, because they were in this, like, rehab place together, him and this girl, and, you know, there's this whole storyline of him, you know, being traumatized and going down that path, you know, but I think his story was pretty compelling. I, I quite enjoyed it, um, and he's still, like, as an adult, he gets, like, haunted by that, like, tall man, um, who floats. It's just so fucking creepy. Um, he would keep seeing him, like, behind him. Um, I will say this, this, um, this show definitely, like, kind of makes you just, like, suspend your disbelief, I guess, or just not, like, wonder what was even really going on in the world anymore, because, like, there's a lot of things that happen that are just like, okay, I, I guess that's a thing. Like, cool. Like, shattering windows randomly. Or, like, you know, seeing this guy randomly. Or, or like, someone, like a ghost, like, forcing you to hang yourself. Or, like, someone, I don't know, you, you showing up in someone's vision, you know, after you are already dead or showing up showing up in the past when after you as you were dying that's another weird one um yeah and then there's the, like the obvious like um like 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 you see the the dead person's ghost um in the house that that one actually makes the most sense because that's just you know you're literally just seeing their ghost um and it, and it does just look like a normal person so that can be a little even that can be a little, like, confusing with that, but that was fine. Um, but yeah, and last but not least, you have the character of Nell, um, who would arguably become the most traumatized by, by, the, um, by the house because she ends up committing suicide. Um, and it was, they took an interesting angle on that that I did have some issues with that I will mention, um, you know, they, they, they tell it from one angle at first where Steve finds out that she killed herself on the phone with his dad, um, you know, and he was like unaware of what was going on. He didn't answer her call and then like, like, oh shit, that sucks. But then, but then you see the story from her perspective, like she couldn't like let go of the house and she was having trouble like coping and um, like, finding ways to get better, um, she got a boyfriend that they, I believe they got married, who then died, like, from what's believed to be one of the things that was haunting her, um, so that really sucked, and that kind of took a toll on her, and then she felt like she couldn't let go of the past, and wanted to go back to the house, and then that led her to kill herself without, without intending to, which is the thing I mentioned earlier, like, like, she wasn't, she didn't actually willingly kill herself, but 
she was she like saw like a vision i guess and then it it just caused her to put this noose around her neck and jump off i guess i don't know it's a little weird but yeah uh, that happens and you know you know you're kind of like the thing i didn't like about it is that you know it's obviously it sucks that she killed herself like you wouldn't want that on any character really but like the angle they take on it is that you already know that she's killed herself and they're they're almost like trying to form like a pity pity party for her by like playing this episode after you already know that so like the, the episode is kind of like eh well I mean we already know what happens to her like now we're just our viewership the viewer is just here to to feel shitty uh, about the fact that they died which you know you do feel shitty for that and that does suck that they died but I'm not saying like um that that was necessarily like a good thing that she killed herself but like I think that like if they if they did it like have it so that like you know we don't know that she killed herself um yet and when they introduce her storyline like we see her like do it and then you're like oh damn and then you see it from like other perspectives after that rather than like seeing it ahead of time and then just being like oh well that's what happens because that's what that's a really big issue i had with this show was that it kept going back to storylines a lot where like things were happening where you already knew the outcome of what was going to happen um more or less um it would just you just gained a like a little bit more insight into like what was going on um from like different perspectives which i guess it's good to have different perspectives but at the same time like i didn't feel like it was entirely necessary um hopefully that's not too like critical of the show i know it did get like high acclaim and i do think it's an enjoyable show i just don't think it's amazing um i definitely had excuse me uh a lot of issues with it um for sure a lot of issues with it i just my my biggest issue with it is i didn't like how it kept like jumping back and forth between timelines um, sometimes it just it just felt pointless um, just to go back to an old timeline. Um, sometimes you did see new developments um, where they would go back to their childhood and you would see like um, something else that had like traumatized them. You're like, oh wow, that's that's rough. Like now you see like how it affects them now. Like you, you compare it to you know like what they're like in the present, and you're like, oh okay, that makes sense. Uh, but but yeah. Um, I would say that, uh, you know, the episodes after a while get kind of like, um, just a little bit redundant. Um, towards the end, there's an episode that like gives us the perspective of the mother in particular, um, where she's just like in the house and you get to see like how she becomes like more, um, bad over time because like she was the most like affected by the house for sure. Um, and she would end up becoming, like, I guess, like, possessed by the house, um, to the point where, like, she went on to, like, kill, and attempt to kill her, um, Dodd, she attempted to kill Luke and, uh, Nell, for sure, and then she attempted to, she did kill, succeed in killing Luke's friend Abigail, who was, like, a little, this other little girl, um, who is a daughter of the family, and she did succeed at that, and you get to s to see like how that leads into this like spiral, into you know, um, uh, the dad who was like a good character. I never really mentioned the dad, but he was a good character. I liked his his role that he had. He was kind of like the dad who like felt like he was in charge of taking ownership and really ensuring that the family was safe, and he always like from the beginning to the end, he was always like really caring of the family and wanted what was best for them and just wanted them to be safe in the house and would, he would stop at nothing to ensure that, you know, they were safe. Um, and that's, that's what he ends up doing here where he takes them away from the house and then he, 
appears to kill the mom, but he didn't actually kill her. She just, she actually killed herself, uh, which they reveal at the end. Um, it's believed that he did kill her, but he really didn't, even though he had like all this blood on his shirt, uh, but he didn't. Um, but yeah, uh, his character is interesting. Um, I, <laughs> he, he has like an older version of his character too, um, which it, it was kind of like shitty for him because like his character was like the punching bag, like like his his own like future self was like the punching bag when they hold it. it a lot of the story like is centered around um, Nell's funeral actually, which is like a big big conflict for the story because you know you have all these different like personalities coming together and clashing. Um, they so all the siblings and the dad come together and they're all kind of clashing a bit. And, you know, the dad is still there just trying to make things right. And he has a hard time with that because, like, it just seems like he can't make amends. Like, like Steve doesn't want to believe him. He thinks everything that he's saying about, you know, the house being haunted and whatnot is horseshit. And then, like, I don't know, like, all the other siblings are, like, clashing with him for various reasons and... It's just like, damn, poor, poor Hugh, like, dang, but, <laughs> but yeah, that's just the way it is, but, and then, you know, with that, you know, you have this whole um, conflict that gets set up at the end where, you know, Luke um, wants to go to the house um, to burn it because he feels, he was almost, like, connected um, to Nell in a way, well, the, one of the episodes was titled The Twin Thing, actually, where it, they've, they like kind of explore the idea that you know twins can sort of empathize with one another or be connected in some way shape or form so Luke you know wants to make things right um, and he had issues with like stealing things all the time and he goes ahead and like steals um, a credit card and a Jeep and goes to the house to try to burn it down like that's Luke but yeah, um, Luke is a great character, by the way. I'm not trying to say anything bad about him. I love his character. But yeah, he goes to the house and attempts to burn it down and shit just goes wrong. Um, I wish they focused on that more at the end, but they really don't. Um, it's more just about like kind of um, having closure with Nell in the end. And then, and then they eventually all get out of the house okay. And then, uh, fuck, I can't. I can't remember. Does I think Hugh, I think Hugh does stay with, um, with, with his mom. That's right. Yeah, yeah, he does because like he wanted the best for his kids. So he said, "I'm going to stay here, and you guys are going to leave." And that was that. He was like, "Okay," and because like, uh, the mom was still there. It's just that she was dead. But it was, it was like she never left because her ghost was there and was talking to him like he was just she was just a normal human being just talking to him and she wanted him to stay, um, and that's what he did, and and then like he gets gets Stephen to believe like in everything and he makes him realize what had happened and you know Stephen kind of has this like character overturn where he becomes like a better person and you know, no longer disbelieves in all this stuff, and, and he's like, oh, I was wrong about everything, you know, that whole thing, so that was kind of cool, I guess, um, and then you have this character of, of Abigail, lastly, um, who this, this, um, there's so many things in this show to mention, but this, this family called the Dudleys, um, had previously lived in the house, and they vowed to no longer go there, because, um, they didn't like it, or, they never really specified, but they had not had a good history with it, so they only wanted to come there during the day to help out with things. So they knew about what the house was doing and what it was capable of. And because of that, um, since their daughter died there, they knew that you know her spirit would remain there, so they wanted to essentially be with her. Um, so they were like, we're going to stay in this house, and that was that. And they just said, yeah, you know what, we're just going to stay here. And 
because like they wanted to be with their daughter and you know then um the guys the dad's wife was dying too and he brought her there so that they could still be together which is kind of wholesome um at the same time kind of creepy the fact that you know a bunch of dead people are living in a house now but you know it, it is what it is but <laughs> but but yeah and then and then at the end it's just a nice a nice little wholesome wrap up um i think it did it did tie it up nicely um it's just that it, there was definitely a lot of issues with how the story was told with the back and forth between the plot and whatnot but yeah um overall i did like it it's just um definitely not my most enjoyed series um there's definitely a lot of moments that I just um, did not enjoy throughout the series, but yeah, um, I I'd say I'd say for like for like Kate Siegel who plays Theo, her acting and like Carla Eugenio who plays the mom, she's also pretty good, and like Luke's character is also really good. Um, I'd say with all that in mind, I'd probably give this series um, a six point two out of ten. I know that's a pretty critical rating, but um, that's what I'm gonna have to give it. So yeah, but yeah, I hope uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Uh, knowing me, there's probably something I missed, but it's hard to really cover everything in a TV show like this. There's just a lot to to digest. And also, I watched, I finished this show like a couple of days ago. So there's probably things that I saw that I just probably didn't I didn't think of. It, but hopefully, maybe I'll think of them. But yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, but I'll see you guys in the next one.